Hello everyone. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we are diving into the fascinating world of plants as we explore the internal and external parts of a leaf. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on more exciting science content. By the end of this video, you should be able to 1. Describe the external parts of a leaf 2. Identify and explain the internal parts of a leaf 3. Describe the adaptations of a leaf for photosynthesis A leaf is more than just a green thing attached to a plant. It's a vital organ that plays several crucial roles. Leaves are responsible for photosynthesis, respiration, and transpiration. Let's break down what each of these processes means and how leaves are perfectly adapted for them. 1. Photosynthesis Leaves contain chlorophyll, which absorbs sunlight to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose of food and oxygen. 2. Respiration They take in oxygen and release carbon dioxide, like other living organisms. Transpiration Water evaporates from tiny pores stomata, on the leaf surface, helping plants regulate temperature and transport nutrients. First, let's look at the external structure of a leaf. The main parts include the blade, petiole, and veins. One blade also called leaf lamina. The blade is the broad, flat part of the leaf. It acts like a solar panel, capturing sunlight for photosynthesis. Its large surface area and thin shape help maximize light absorption and allow sunlight to penetrate all cells and shortens the distance for carbon dioxide diffusion. It also has a flexible texture. This allows the leaf to bend in wind to avoid tearing. 2. The petiole The petiole is the stalk that connects the blade to the stem. It positions the blade for optimal light exposure and contains vascular tissues to transport water and nutrients. It is also flexible to allow the leaf to twist or droop to avoid intense midi sun, a survival tactic. 3. Veins sometimes referred to as vascular bundles. Veins are the branching networks of xylem and phloem. Xylem transports water and minerals from the roots upward, while phloem transports glucose downward to other plant parts. Veins come in different patterns, like reticulate in dicots and parallel in monocots. The other external parts of a leaf include 4. Midrib, the central vein running down the middle of the leaf, which provides strength and helps in transporting water and nutrients. 5. Leaf margin, the edge of the leaf, which can vary in shape. 6. Apex, the tip of the leaf, which can be pointed or rounded depending on the type of the plant. Now, let's dive inside the leaf to explore its internal structure. 1. The cuticle. The cuticle is a transparent, waxy layer that reduces water loss and protects the leaf from bacterial attacks. Its thickness varies depending on the plant's environment. Desert plants like cacti have thick cuticles while rainforest plants have thin ones. Some cuticles contain toxic compounds to repel herbivores. 2. Upper Epidermis Below the cuticle is the upper epidermis, a single layer of cells without chloroplasts. It protects the leaf and allows light to pass through to the cells below. No photosynthesis takes place on this layer, this allows it to remain transparent for light to reach deeper cells. 3. Palisade Mesophyll The palisade mesophyll is where most photosynthesis occurs. This is a layer of cells located below the upper epidermis. These tightly packed, column-shaped cells contain a high density of chloroplasts, maximizing light absorption. The palisade mesophyll is the primary site of photosynthesis. 4. Spongy mesophyll The spongy mesophyll has loosely arranged cells with large air spaces, facilitating its exchange. That is carbon dioxide enters and oxygen and water vapor exit. 
It keeps the leaf's internal environment moist, aiding in the opening of stomata by maintaining humidity. They also have fewer chloroplasts than the palisade mesophyll cells. 5. Vascular Bundles Inside the leaf, vascular bundles consist of xylem and phloem tissues. Bundles of xylem and phloem are surrounded by supportive cells. Xylem, the lignin-reinforced walls prevent collapse under water tension. Xylem tissues conduct water and some dissolved mineral salts from the roots to other plant parts. Phloem, sieve tubes with companion cells to load and unload sugars efficiently. Phloem translocate manufactured food materials from photosynthetic areas to other plant parts. 6. The stomata. Stomata are tiny pores surrounded by guard cells, primarily found on the leaf's underside. They allow carbon dioxide to enter for photosynthesis and release oxygen and water vapor. Guard cells control the opening and closing of stomata to regulate gas exchange and water loss. They the water to open stomata during the day and shrink to close them at night. Stomata are mostly on the underside to minimize direct sun exposure and water loss. Leaves are perfectly adapted for photosynthesis. Their large surface area, thin shape, and specialized cells ensure they can capture sunlight efficiently. The arrangement of chloroplasts and the presence of air spaces facilitate gas exchange, making leaves the powerhouses of plants. And that's a wrap on the internal and external parts of a leaf. I hope you enjoyed learning about these amazing structures. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more science content. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.